In this video series, we go through job descriptions and we look at some of the key terms you guys as uh, recruiters may still not know. So for example, a database. On one hand, you can uh, hear of this term on a daily basis, but still may not be sure what it really means, what uh, types of databases are out there. And this is precisely what we are going to talk about uh, now. What are the types of databases you may wonder? So first, relational database and second, non-relational databases. So a relational databases, uh, you guys most likely have heard uh, about MySQL or Oracle databases or Microsoft uh, SQL, you know, MS, SQL. SQL is uh, usually pronounced as SQL, MS SQL. MySQL, Oracle, okay? These are relational databases. And non-relational databases, for example, MongoDB, okay? Or relational could also be uh, Postgres. So I'll type it here, Postgres, Postgres, Postgres. Mm -hmm. with, uh, with relational, I'll, I'll, I'll show you on an example, okay? So say we have two tables here, a table with users and a table with countries. A table, well, imagine, um, imagine in an Excel spreadsheet, you have two sheets, okay? So say in one are users, in the other one are countries. And you want to keep track of the users, which country are they from? Uh, you know, it could be your customers, it could be your registered um, um, users on the website. So say you have an, you have a list of these users. So user number one, two, three, four, five, it could be you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of users. And you have, uh, uh, you have uh, countries, lists of countries. Uh, you know, how many countries are out there? Uh, well, roughly 200, right? So say from one to 200. And every country has a name. So it could be, say, Slovakia could be the first one, it could be, I don't know, Poland, it could be China, it could be USA, etc, etc, right? You have all these, all these countries in a separate table. And now what is important is um, that, you know, these tables relate to each other. This column here, this is country ID. So this column refers to this column here. So if a user one is from Slovakia, then here would also be number one. And the name of the user would be, say it's, it's me, so it's Michael. And the user number two would be from Poland. So number two is Poland. So here the number, uh, the user number two would be, um, you know, Katarina, for example. Okay, so uh, this is a huge advantage of a relational uh, databases. You don't need to have a column here. An alternative would be to have a column here with uh, text, for example, Slovakia. It could be here instead of the number Slovakia. But this would bring lots of additional challenges, uh, which, um, you know, in general, we want to avoid. So, for example, what, what, if, what if the country's name changes? And with countries, it's not very common, but still, but still, what if a you know, country name would change? Then you would need to go through the whole list of, of users and change it, should there be written you know, Slovakia. But if here is just the ID, country ID, then you, know, you just change it once and it changes in the whole database. And not just in the table users, but I've worked with, uh, with databases uh, of... Um, say 400, 500 tables, all these tables are connected to each other. So here I show you a very simple example of two tables only, but there could be 10 other tables. There could be many more columns here in the user table. You know, it could be, um, you know, it, there could be an address, there could be an IP address. Uh, you know, I've worked with tables that have uh, 20, 30 columns or, or more, and most of them were IDs. So, uh, so they refer to each other. So this is how relational databases work. 
they are based on the relationships. So uh, you have here these, they call it foreign, foreign keys, foreign relationships from one table to another. You have here IDs, you know, referred to another tables. So here, this would be referred to another table. Again, here would be ID and some name, ID and name, ID and name. Okay, and this would refer to another table. Again, ID and name, ID and name. And obviously, you can have more uh, more columns here. It don't uh, you don't need to have just ID and name. There could be also currency. But here, for example, you would not write currency here like euro. That again doesn't make sense. You want to avoid um, writing this in in multiple. Um, multiple uh, rows. Here again, you want to um, you, you want to connect it to another table. For example, a table currency where you would have again ID and name. So you would have for example one would be euro. Number two would be um, I don't know US dollar. Number three would be etc etc etc. So here, if there would be say currency ID. You would only write here one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Uh, you know, on, on some level, um, maybe I could also show you an example of some real database, but as soon as you have more and more tables, then it gets uh, more difficult. So I try to show you a super simple example so you can see how one table can refer to data from another table and another table, another table, but also the other table could refer to another table. Um, so, so this is how it works in relational databases. In non-relational databases, uh, the situation is completely different. You don't have uh, one, uh, one table um, refer to another table. You simply dump all the data uh, which which has its pros and cons uh, for different um, use cases. So, for example, these non-relational databases are great for for log files to store a huge amounts of data that don't need to relate to each other. These relational databases are great for, for example, transactions uh, where you have a transaction system like an e-shop, and you want to uh, keep track of orders and you want to um, maintain some. Um, you know, proper relationships between tables. So each has its own purpose. With relational um, databases uh, could also be used for transaction or analytical purposes. So you have this OLAP or OLTP, but I'll not divert uh, too much. Uh, this could be a, a huge topic itself. I've worked with databases for years. So, uh, so I could, uh, well, in fact, actually have a dedicated course only about databases and uh, zoomed into how to optimize the performance of databases, uh, which is, uh, again, a really cool topic. But coming back to uh, this job description, where, where we looked at an, uh, a job, job description where they looked for a SQL database developer, now you see what databases are, right? So developers need to develop these databases. And here, let me just check if there was written anything about the relational, non-relational database. I cannot see it. No, no. So here it's interesting. They don't even write what kind of a database the developer should use, which is, uh, well, well, how, how useful that is, right? Uh, if, if a developer focuses on non-relational databases, then most likely he will not want to work with uh, Microsoft technologies or Oracle. Or if a developer works only with uh, data warehouse databases, then he's unlikely to suddenly work with non-relational databases. So it's always good practice to, to be aware of these uh, uh, best practices and then adjust the job description based on what your client, what the, what the company is uh, looking for. With that, I'll wrap it up and I encourage you guys, if you have any questions, please ask uh, in comments so I know what to improve in this and the next videos. And obviously, please uh, go ahead and subscribe so you get more videos like this one, which will help you become a great technical recruiter.